In this context, let us look at are workers thriving, are they enjoying, are the employees and particularly the young employees are enjoying, data suggests something very different. I am quoting only uh, uh, two data points or two the findings of two survey, uh, Deloitte uh, millennial survey and one more survey. It suggests that stress is increasing like pandemic amongst the millennials and generation Z's who are basically 20 to 30 years of age. They are regularly stressed because of the financial future, uncertainty of the financial future, well, uh, uncertainty about the welfare of the family, uncertainty or job prospects, day to day finances, physical and mental health. These are the reasons because of which young employees and young professionals, even young students are suffering from the stress. And this data is almost coherent in the millennials as well as the uh, generation Z's. If we look at the mental health data, that also corroborates with this story. The percentage people reporting excellent or very good mental health is not even half of the working population otherwise who are healthy people who do not have any serious ailment amongst those as well not even not even the half of them are saying that they are feeling very good and excellent in terms of their mental health. So, the question is can a stressed out and anxious mind learn be creative innovative envision the possibilities and use the autonomy being provided because of the changing professional context for the bigger causes. Can a stressed out mind be an innovative mind? And if a stressed out mind cannot be innovative mind or cannot envision the possibilities, how can it can take the real benefits which are presented to him because of the changing professional context? The changing professional context can become a burden for the person instead of being an opportunity for that person. And that is why we see the mental health issues are gaining attention and mental health issues are gaining more are and the mental health issues are becoming more and more serious in the current times. The number of people dying because of the suicide has already surpassed the number of people dying because of the accident, wars and terrorist attacks together. This suggests that large number of people are not able to find meaning and purpose in their life. Large number of people are not able to manage their mind, manage their emotion and they become so dysfunctional that their emotion and their mind starts working against them and as a result of that there is a huge percentage of the people who are not thriving but they are languishing. So, this was the international data of course, Indian data was in, was incorporated in those studies, but we were interested to know what exactly is going on in India, what is the state of well being amongst the Indian youth, particularly those who are in the higher education. So, uh, last year that means 2021, we conducted a survey across India and data was collected from uh, different parts of India, Mysore, Jaipur, Lucknow, Guwahati, uh, other northeast state, Nagaland, uh, Jammu, Bhopal, and all these places that I was collected from the students uh, from different streams from ranging from engineering to law to commerce. So, it was a pretty representative data. This was uh, the study we undertook 
uh, with the support of ICSSR funded project. And what we found that amongst the Indian youth population as well, more than 51 percent people were actually moderately flourishing and 15 percent of them had the risk of slipping into languishing stage. About 35 percent people were actually flourishing. So, there is a great opportunity for bringing larger percentage of people from moderately flourishing to flourishing zone and preventing 15, 20 high risk people in the moderately flourishing zone in to, rem, uh, to keep them there and helping them to not slipping into the languishing stage. Here we need to understand that to be flourishing means to be filled with the positive emotions and to be functioning well psychologically and socially. Whereas adults with the incomplete mental health are languishing in life and they are with the low well-being. So, Key suggested that languishing may be conceived of as emptiness, stagnation, constituting a life of quiet despair and parallels account of individual who describe themselves and life as hollow, empty, a shell, a void, etc. So, this is how we need to understand what is flourishing, what is languishing and moderately flourishing meaning some elements of flourishing and some element of languishing. So, this was the as is situation in, in Indian youth. We also wanted to understand what are the factors which determine the languishing or flourishing or moderately flourishing state of uh, youth population. And what we found there was probably much more insightful. I am saying much more because uh, uh, the the percentage of the languishing, flourishing and moderately flourishing uh, uh, size is in line with the more or less proportion we have found in the other surveys conducted by uh, Gallup and other social indicator uh, survey organizations. What we found, we were, we were interested in looking at what are the driving factors of flourishing or languishing. So, we looked at values, state of uh, family, family cohesion, connectedness of the person with the social cause, their academic excellence, academic engagement. We also looked at engaged living, meaning their uh, ability and their perception about they being able to live according to their values. Because person can might be having certain values, but might not have opportunity or the other emotional resources required to live those values. So, we looked at uh, that aspect as well. What we found there was self direction in the uh, multinomial logistic regression. The self direction was the major determinant of the flourishing. Achievement and self direction were the only two values which were connected to flourishing which were influencing flourishing and achievement had interesting relationship. If achievement increases as a value increases, then it make people move more towards languishing. So, inherently it is the self direction, my ability to look at life, identify my priorities perform according to that, this ability, this value was found to be the most important determinant of the well-being. And you know what, what was the second most important thing? The second most important thing was social connectedness. A students ability to connect and ability to perform for the social cause and their connection with the social purpose was turned out to be another major factor which was resulting into which had a highest association with the flourishing. Family cohesion has the ability to prevent people slipping into languishing, but that is more closely related to moderately flourishing. The family cohesion was able to explain more number of cases, more than 80 percent cases of the moderately flourishing zone rather than 
flourishing zone. They were explaining about 19-20% of the flourishing zone population, but explaining 80% of the moderately flourishing population. So, these, this study again strengthened our idea and strengthen our idea. So, this study also strengthened our idea to float this course and design this course and to be floated at this platform. Because flourishing is determined by self direction. So, any course on self management is about attaining highest level of personal well being. Any course on self management or career management is intricately connected to well being and well being is found to be deeply connected to flourishing. It is actually a expressed through flourishing and lack of well being is expressed through languishing and these things are deeply connected to the agency, my ability to look at my situation and take action, reflect upon it and take action. That is why a course on the self management need to look at, need to be based on well being and it has to strengthen the agencies, has to strengthen the self efficacy, it has to work on people to, to become much more aware of their life situation and their life choices. So, all these findings goes back to the age old wisdom of Bhagavad Gita which says that I am my foe and I am my friend. This self is the foe and friend of itself. So, it is the self only which has to work for the self management and self improvement. Ripu is foe, Bandhu is friend or uh, brotherly uh, person, this self is both, it is friend and foe. So, elevate yourself through the power of yourself, that is the message, that is the old message coming from the wisdom tradition and that is substantiated by our most recent research about the well-being in the youth population as well.